questions we have right now. Okay. okay. So here's the here's the real story. Here's things that we're looking at. There's three trees that we we're planting today. Two of them are in the ground and one's still in the go. This is a tulip tree, very fast growing shade tree. You can see that the roots all concentrated at the bottom and twisted together. Extra soil was added on the top. When you see that, when you see when the you see root that, and then no root, that's extra soil. Yeah, these roots are actually growing up into the extra soil and around because the that's where they put the fertilizer too. Yeah. So I have not, I have not handled this one to put it in the ground yet, but I'm going to put my fingers down next to that trunk and peel all these roots out. Like you saw me doing in the other picture. They're not attached to the trunk. They came from down here. I'm going to pull them outward. If they make it good, I can spread them out. Hey, you can see it right here. These roots are all coming up. Roots are supposed to go out, out <laughs> not grow up. Um, this is another tree that I did get this one planted and I'll show it to you later. It's a magnolia. And these roots are growing from the bottom up into the soil that was added on top. Um, some plants are actually good plants. Um, mm -hmm. uh, this is from a, a good grower that we know. It's a butterfly bush. Butterfly bushes are, we treat them as perennials, but they're, they're shrubs. They're woody plants. And their woody plant, their woody roots like to go real wide and end up getting root bound by the end of the year. But this one was put into a large enough pot and was root pruned in the beginning of the year. So all I'm doing is hollowing out center because quite often there's no roots there's in the no center. root built up in the center the roots yeah. tried to grow out and then they couldn't go out any further so they went down and so quite often there's nothing there and once i hollow out that center i'll be able to pull the roots out we'll sh i'll show you that in a minute in a few minutes so here's another a third tree that we planted and this one went in the ground today this is a sergeant crab apple and we're looking at a plant that was grown in a pot and then moved into a burlap bag we think we're not sure we haven't seen this pro this uh, particular protocol before. Um, so we're taking the burlap off and making a space for it to grow. I'm taking the vegetation that's there off. And by cutting it out, not just scraping it off, not yeah. using a sod stripper, you're I, cutting it so you get I, all the root. I cut it. I cut across with the spade. I cut and then I cut again. And I cut again. And now with the fork, I'm loosening and pulling that out, knocking the soil off and getting rid of the, the vegetation. And I'm putting that tree in a place where it's going to look good. Many of us have done this. You put the tree here. And then later mm. on, you realize I should have put the tree here. Here's where a tree was. It was, it taken was an out. old tree there. Here's where I'm putting the tree in. And I'm putting it in there because it's more centered as you first come down the walk. It's more centered in this area. And also because as you walk down toward the door or in the living room and you look out, you can see from the door, you can see that tree where it will be with the background of the garage, whereas where it was before, it was not getting a good background except on half of its branches. And that, that tree is not meant to block poor views. It's, right, it's just know. to be, be admired. From the door itself, I put that orange bucket there so that see the orange bucket right by. I can just see the trunk. And as the tree grows, I'll be able to see that there's a tree there. From the living room, I'm looking right at the tree. So put it in a good place if you're gonna move it, Make sure it's a good place as seen by the, from the places you most often see. Now it's almost a five foot tree. It should have five feet of roots at least on each at side. At least. But I'm making a hole that's not that big because I'm making it big enough to handle the roots that it has. That it does have. And at least a year's growing time. And what we'll do over years is we'll keep loosening further out and make the bed bigger as it grows. Because that's where the roots should be going to. It should have been up. Whoop. Out there, he's pointing to the soil. Out there. <laughs> now, the soil here is terrible. It is, uh, there's there's some topsoil that was spread and then the, the, the very poor grass was put on top of it. But underneath it is hard packed. It's so, it's very compacted. It's a, it's a clay loam that was repeatedly probably run across with equipment. Bulldozers. So I'm loosening and I know I need to get down at least a fork step. To loosen, yeah. I don't and have to go it's deeper. It's taken a long right. time just to get that little bit. Yeah. And I know they, I know I need to go a fork step because that's about the root system that came out of that bag. So here's what came out of the bag. That's it. That's it. That was what was there. There's the pot that it must have been in at some point. You it can, must have been in the bag for a while because there were pieces of burlap uh, and stuck in, in the, the, bottom, in the, roots, in the roots in the bottom. Yep. But we're looking at a plant that's got adventitious roots up here. Right, at the right top. there, my knife is holding yep. them separate. These are adventitious roots. See, they're all the same size. Whereas this flare root 
gets very thick as it gets to the trunk, very wide as it gets to the trunk. This one may or may not be a flare. It's and at the same level as the flare roots and we're gonna keep it. But these are definitely not flare roots. And not neither necessary. is the one, see this one above? Compare that yep. diameter to the diameter you've got on a flare root. That's what you look for is that thick thickening right near the trunk. It just now you gets can see that thicker. I took all of the potting mix off. I, I wanted, I needed to find out what was going on with the flare roots. I couldn't tell whether they were wrapped around each other or curled under as mm -hmm. quite often happens. Um, so I took the soil off and I bare rooted this plant. Um, each of those flare roots got down to the bottom and does have, did have roots growing from it. I mean, look, it has usually when you see white root that means they're healthy that that the roots are growing right black root is usually rotted when it's black and mushy it's yeah. rotted but, but whoever put it into the pot root pruned it so all of these roots were cut and they, this is all grown from them i said well that's good that's a good root system so i put that root system in i'm going to put it in the ground at this depth at the flare depth right there it was potted where this was underground too, but that's wrong. That's going to make, encourage the plant to grow adventitious roots and suckers. And we don't want a sergeant crab apple to have suckers. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why a lot of trees sucker because yeah. they're too deep in the ground, not so because they sucker. Yeah, <laughs> there's not much flexibility to those roots, so I can't really spread them across a, a, a pile of soil. So I've, I've dug to the depth to make them, the flare, sit at ground level. I put the plant in. I make sure that it's straight. So my fork is holding it up. The knife is holding the fork and the fork is holding the tree. And I'm walking around to see if it's straight. As straight as... Uh, as straight as we want it to be. Yes. And then I've added soil now and then muddied it in, added water in order to push the, the soil down, even that crummy soil, she down did, in among yeah. the roots of the tree. She didn't completely fill the hole yet. This is... Yep. This so is there, a, there's the water. I've added water. And that's pushed the soil down and helped it infiltrate between the roots. Well, you ref then I add more soil and I add water again. And that's how pour it out of a bucket. So if yep, the, the water, you need the, the weight, weight of the water to push it down. down. And that water will also tell you where you have cavities I below. Yes, go ahead. I'm not watching anything in there. I'm watching something over oh, okay. here. Okay, never mind. The, the water sunk in a space where there was a vacuum below. You do not need to, and you should not walk around a tree or shrub and stamping down, down with your feet. Don't. You don't even have to do it with your hands. Just do it with the water. The water will tell you you need some more soil here. You throw more soil, water again. Yep, but you need the weight of the water to tell you that. To push it down. And by the way, when you're picking up a, a tree this time of year and the leaves have fallen off of it, Look for the buds. This the buds are, are soft and flexible and they're well, not hard. Well, in the fall, not they're flexible. not they're not flexible. But like they're not hard. Spur, but they're, There's a difference. They're not dry. They they're are not dry. You can actually word. put your fingers on either side of this and squish it, and it's like and it's like squeezing a uh, an onion. You can that's, tell that there's flexible. That's okay. okay. Right. All right. All right. Definitions. On to another example: the magnolia with the roots growing up. Um, that magnolia had, uh, I took all of the soil off because I could see the adventitious roots growing above and the flare roots, see the big thick roots down here. I looked and I said, oh, those roots look like they're all turned down and are growing down around each other. So I washed it all the way to bare root um, and found that this flare root, see when sure it's done, enough. it's grown around and down and through the other roots. And as it thickens and becomes as big as my arm and as big as my leg, it's gonna cut off the other roots. So unfortunately, I said, you've gotta go. You right there, you can't do that. You're not flexible enough for me to move you out of there. So I cut it, I cut it right there. You cut it where, you, where it will leave it pointed in the direction you want it to grow. If you cut, if you cut it, it there, if you it's cut gonna it keep here, going, it'll keep going down. Oops, sorry. You we'll cut it there so it'll go down. out. And then I, I followed the rest of it and loosened it from the rest of the soil, the, the roots and took it out. That's what came out. It went down, around, through, and back up through everything. And that all, see how much thicker it is, that all would have kept thickening and girdling and killing other roots. And it, it, we think the tree is gonna be fine, but that one cut may be a little too close to the trunk. Well, right? yeah, that is close to the trunk for a tree with a, with a trunk this size. It shouldn't have had its root 
um, pruned closer than about six inches, but you can't help it. No. You don't have to do it there. Yeah. Yep. I so think it will be fine. Can. I think when so it, too. When but. it was when it was put in, it should have been root pruned. When it when it was in that little pot that made that root go down like this, when they it took should it have out. been pruned when they took it out. But it grew all of this root since then, and it'll grow all of that root again. It's a healthy. So plant. it's gone in here over a lump over a mound of soil, and soil is a subjective term. Look at that soil. It's it's a hard packed clay loam. By digging it, I've broken it up. I use that soil to fill back in again. Mm -hmm. And the adventitious root that was growing above the flare is right here. I cut off the fine roots and left just these, these uh, end roots went out, oh, about eight inches. I left them, but cut off the fine roots. There it is right there, that adventitious root just sitting at, uh, at above ground level. And now it's mulched and has a crater around it, a levee around it. Perennials do the same thing. This is a hibiscus. Hibiscus is a, it's got quite a woody, thick root that wants to be as wide or wider than the hibiscus the shrub, but it can't grow anywhere except down the sides of the pot. Um, and as often as the case, the center does not have much of any root in it. And so I've, I've uh, cleared the center of the root. I cut the bottom of the root, root ball off, cut it. Yep. cut it off. And now I'm loosening underneath. That gives me flexibility. I've taken that much soil out and you can use a, a, a hose to do that. I use the hose to help rinse that stuff out of there. Then now the ends are free of those thick roots and I can bend them outward as I plant. They're flexible. They're easier to bend. If they won't flex, well, cut I have to cut them. But they flex quite a ways. We'll get a wider root system and see it's much less depth it's not what a hibiscus wants. It wants to have wide roots like most woody plants do. Baptisia is a woody plant too. You saw in the pictures that John Weaver produced that it wants to have about a 10 foot root system, nine, 10 foot root system, but it's all been trapped in this little pot. So I've, this is a knife, uh, a saw edge knife. I'm cutting the bottom off because that's where all the roots came down and got tangled. I'm cutting the bottom off. And then I'm taking the knife and driving it into the side, into the shoulder of the root ball, next to the trunk, into the shoulder and cutting outward because all of these have circled around and around and around. And I need to cut my own way of doing it is at least two cuts on the plant so that I don't have circles. I don't yeah. have roots going all the way around. And it's slice down. Slice through. It could be difficult on some of the I've done this. Hard. I've done this hundreds of times. We lose very few plants. And those that we lose, we said, I'm glad that I lost you now and not five years from now. Or 10. Yeah. yeah. So it's up to you to do the fall planting now um, and ask any questions that you will while we've got time left. We've got plenty. That's great. We don't always have plenty. Well, that's because we have just our main topic today. You know, those of you who come on Saturdays that we quite often have, we, we mostly have um, what we're doing this week in the garden first, and then our main topic, and then mm -hmm. some additional topics. Yeah. So now we have time. What do you want to talk about? Well, I have a question or two here. When you have to cut flare roots that are going to girdle, do you also prune the trunk or branches? No, no, that's, no. that's old thinking. It's been disproved. The tips of the branches, as they grow, create auxin. That's rooting hormone. If you cut the tips of the branches off, you reduce the amount of oxen that's going to the roots. Yeah, you do um, not it's, trim it's, a tree to, it's if old, you trim roots. That's it's, not... it's old thinking. If, if the tree is going to be unable to support itself because it has less root, then you wait and let it tell you what pieces it's going to lose. Mm -hmm. And you clip those off. But it, is, it was disproved in the 70s and again throughout the, the next couple of decades, but people still keep saying that you have to cut the top to match the roots. No, it's not true. Well, it's the same with the, somehow we thought volcano mulching was good you know well, i don't know who came up with that i i have my theories on that one yeah. and do you always prune away the adventitious roots from the trunk sometimes i do as with the sergeant crab i took some of them off and left one i left one on the magnolia we left some on those locusts that we saw us planting at the library most of the time i take them all off one of the experts who's probably planted a whole lot more trees than we have um, and wrote the book on this called Up by the Roots, um, says you take all of that off, remove all of it. it. 
if it's no, adventitious, no issues. take it off, leave the flares. If you don't do that, you're going to lose. But I, I sometimes do what I did today, which and, is say, and, I'll leave you for a while. And, and at the library, she had so many people going, oh, oh, you're cutting those roots that she said, okay, well, we'll just leave them up. We'll, and we're going to end up taking them off. Yeah, we will not bury them. We will yeah. not bury them. We will not bury the trunk. We'll just put the tips of the roots in and, and say that they're doing something for us in the meanwhile. Yeah. This... And you you remove the soil off the uh, those balls with the hose. Yeah, with most of the a time, combination of hose and and fingers. Trowel. Um, okay. Yeah, if it's uh, I'm I'm usually loosening it with water, and then using my fingers, I can kind of feel where the roots are going and and untangle them. Yes. Okay. That's, that's a uh, lot of experience and touch, though, too. But she's so. She's taught me how to. I have them. seen. I have seen so many people do a really good job of it. Once you tell them that yep. these roots are tangled around, I have seen so many people say, "Ah, I see." Yep. Um, yeah. Once you try um, it, you realize. Uh, can you explain again how you cut all cut those roots on the baptisia? I cut the bottom of the pot off, just like it was a wheel of cheese. I just sliced the inch. bottom right off, maybe an inch of the pot inch, right off. Inch, inch and a half, depending. Yep, everything that was tangled at the bottom, I said, you're gone. Then okay. I, I plunged the knife into the top of the root ball as if it was a cake, but I didn't, tie, I didn't cut the trunk. I just cut in toward the center and then pulled outward, sawed outward. And you can, when you do it, you will feel the roots that, you're, that are circled. You'll feel that you are sawing through circled roots and i do that on two sides or three sides of the plant they used to tell us to just um kind of score Slice the them, side score. Yeah. you have to cut deep i have i have given up too many plants like that baptisia i would have to take them all the way to bare root only to find out that at the center there are twisted mass that i can't untwist and i was going to have to prune them anyway i go i'm pruning any circled stuff out right now we haven't lost anything yet i've done that with seven suns i've done it with beaches We've done it with spruces, um, whatever. Yeah, we've done it with a lot of plants. Um, yeah. Monica wants to know, can you explain the difference between flare and adventitious roots again, please? Flare roots, um, are there are four to 11 flare roots on any tree. Nobody knows exactly why some have four and some have eight and some have 10 and some have 11, but someplace between four and 11 of the roots differentiate themselves when the plant is young and begin to thicken greatly where the trunk and the root join. And those roots become buttresses. They are literally, they look like elephant trunks where they, they, they thin out as they get away from the trunk, but they thicken very quickly at the trunk. And, and you think about it, that it, it, they're at that level, they may be this far apart, but when the tree gets bigger, they, it, they grow to the same size and they're so big. Yeah. Whoops, you know, I lost the see. share screen. I oh. was going to move back to a picture of a flare root and see if we could if we could do that. Um, mm -hmm. that one. Sorry, I have to stay in this other version in order in this other uh, view in order to to move around in the in the PDF. Whoops. No. Do you know how to do it? Steve? Yeah. OK. Um, yeah, just get us down to a flare root. We're at the bottom going back toward the top, zip us up to the top. Up to the top? Yep. How high? Uh, oh, a quarter of the way. Oh. Come down to the um, seven sun. There we go. There. OK, um, I think this is a good enough picture to see, but it's certainly coming up later. Um, when we move the seven sun, it's going to be easier to see. There we go. There. OK, these roots that attach to the trunk, that's two roots coming from one flare. See how wide that is right there? It is a very wide root, as opposed to this little root. Um, if we follow this all the way to the trunk, it stays nearly the same diameter all the way to the trunk. Um, that's a flare. It flares out from the base of the trunk and it continues to do that for the life of the tree. It's the ones that make it look like your tree is lifting out of the ground. Mm -hmm. But that buttress is what that strength of root is what holds the plant up. And, and they've also found out that a lot of the nutrients and, and starches and that go up through those flare roots. Yeah, more so than the other smaller roots. Um, adventitious roots are roots growing from a place you don't expect. They usually are growing above the flares 
from the trunk. That's what makes them adventitious. They're not natural. They grew because of something that happened and they took advantage of it. It's adventitious, but it's kind of think of it as mm -hmm. they took advantage of the trunk being buried. Does, does that help? Is that Monica? I'm not sure who was asking. She'll have to chat. Monica. Yes, I was. Thank you. I had to step away earlier. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's okay. oh, that's okay. That's okay. It, it's, it does. Uh, the people. flare roots are the hardest for people to grasp that they get the way they look, the, the thickness. Um, but but once once you actually see flare roots um, on a tree or shrub, when you pull it apart, you will know the difference. Um, on that magnolia, that's a flare root. Mm -hmm. That's an adventitious root. Yeah, and are you trying to spread a both types of root out as flat as you can then? Yes, I'm trying to get all of the root tips to be out wide rather than going down unnaturally. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that this is just so interesting because that is not how I have planted. And like once you see it, it makes so much sense. But like right. I didn't think to get there. Well, but but who sees roots? That's the no, whole thing. They're the hidden secret part of a plant. It's the most important part of the plant. And and some of the things that we object to with a lot of the tree things and things that people they don't look at the roots. They look at the tree and they say, Oh, it's got scorch, or or it's got, you know, and they don't try to find that. 80% of the problems in trees are often from roots. Yeah, the, um, the, the Dawn Redwood that I showed you, the great big huge root that, that was girdling the trunk, um, that the reason that the owner asked me to look at that tree, she said, tell me why these leaves are turning brown. Well, I didn't even look at the leaves. As I walked up to the tree, I saw that the tip, the leader at the top had died back mm -hmm. and that the trunk was flat on one side. I said, the tree is girdled it's stressed, things happen when they're stressed. They get leaf spot, insects attack them more readily. Things happen because of stress. Let's get rid of the girdling root first. Are there other questions? Uh, let's see, uh, John and Donna uh, asked the same process for root balls, salad and Georgia clay. Yes. Unfortunately, um, it's, it's harder to get clay uh, to, to bear root and to clear off the roots of a tree that's in a heavy clay, but you can do it. And it's sometimes uh, it, it's scary because they, the roots will sometimes crack from the weight of the clay on there. The, the clay is, yeah. is problematical sometimes. Yeah, we, had one, we had one river birch in a heavy, um, heavy Tennessee clay. It probably was rather than Georgia clay. And um, the, the, the roots not only were trapped in the clay ball, but it was so dry that water was not going into the ball at all. We ended up drilling holes into the clay and adding water repeatedly until we got the clay wet enough to be able to start spreading roots out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I think Pat Dodge has the answer. Would a power washer of 2000 PSI be too powerful to use on a densely packed arbor vitae? Yeah, Steve's Steve's nearly taken the skin off his foot with the power washer. Yeah. The uh, the the and the attachment on a air spade actually swirls the air. It doesn't blast it straight out. And same with the that water pressure is just so. If you had a real wide spray and not get too close, maybe. But then it blows. Steve cleaned off our sidewalk below the deck because he was having such fun with the power washer. And there are grooves in the sidewalk, in the concrete sidewalk, that every time I look at them, I laugh about men and their power tools. They yeah. just have to use them on everything. We try. Yeah, too, too strong. You'll take the bark right off of the tree and, and hurt the roots with a power washer. Question about uh, perennials. If dividing comb flowers down, do you cut down the foliage, which is dried up and scraggly? Oh, yeah, definitely. Sure, Any, anything, that's, anything that's dried up, um, I take off. Uh, you cut back. Just get back it out away. Back mm -hmm. to trees. I have a leaning tree. Can I dig up one side and try to straighten it up or dig out the whole tree? Um, trees that lean sometimes lean because the light is greater on one side and so they grow that way. Sometimes they lean because they're growing better on one side and, and they're girdled on the other side and don't have any roots to anchor them. So that as they get heavier on the better side and they're girdled on the other side, they begin to lean. So it depends on what's going on. Yeah. You can't, you can't grab, put a rope around a tree and Straight pull it, it back. Up. 
that you have to find out why it's leaning. Is it, is it, are the roots not anchoring it? Is the top growing unevenly? Um, pruning or, or, re, or digging up is probably the, the thing, the way to go. And can you get rid of a girdling root on a big tree? You can, but it's problematic whether the tree is, is whether it, a lot of times when people see the symptoms of a girdling root, it's too far gone. The tree is already I, embedded it, itself. It may through. take 15 years for it to finally go, but right. it's already in decline. Yeah, we've been told by arborists who do um, uh, root prune and will use an air spade to clear out and see where the girdling roots are, that you can't really call it saving the tree. You can call it buying it time. You buy it time and see. With that girdling root, it was gonna die. You bought it time and see whether it does well. But if it's in if it's in decline already, you're not likely to see it. And, and a lot depends on the species of trees too. Some sure. are you could probably girdle um, uh, the Siberian elms and and the fox elders, and they'll keep going. Yeah. Just mm. a, it, just something that you can try is all. Try yeah. it earlier is better than later. Back to the leaning tree for a minute. We had a uh, oh, what is the green barked tree in California called? Not a mesquite, it's a, anyway, Ooh. the tree with green bark that grows in California in the desert Southwest. Pucalyptus? Pea something? Um, Pea. I will, I'll, oh, I'll uh, think of it later. Anyway, we had it. one of those in the client's backyard in California and I came into the yard and they had rope around it and staked it to the hill further back. I said, what is with the tree? They said, oh, it keeps falling over. I said, well, they, they said it's because there's so much wind. I went and I looked at it and it had a girdling root on the side that they were staking, that they were holding up. I said, well, it's planted too deep. It's got a girdling root. Um, now this is in California where things grow pretty much year round, but I cut, I, I had no choice. That was, a, it was one of the flare roots and it was wrapped right around the trunk and the other roots. I chiseled it out and took it out mm -hmm. of there. And then I propped the tree up. I put a, a Y a branch that I'd cut from the tree itself. So it holds it. That's... So that the tree would sit in the Y. In if, the it, prop. if it wanted to re lean over, it would sit in the prop, not get, gir not get girdled by a rope pulling it the other way. The next year, and it was just a little tree, um, two inches in diameter. The next year I could hang on a branch on the side away and from it. Wouldn't... And it was already holding itself up with me hanging with the extra weight hanging on there. Yeah. So uh, they can recover real quickly. These leaning trees, if you figure out why they're leaning in the first place. Is it the Palo Verde? Yes. Yes. yes Palo Verde. You. There you go. I knew we it had a couple people something. chime in on that one. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I knew it was yeah. peace something anyway. <laughs> Uh, if a Miss Kim lilac has a girdled thick root, might that be saved if taken off? Oh yeah, um, yeah. Shrubs are much more likely to be saved because shrubs, by their their nature, grow new trunks on a regular basis. Something happens to a trunk, they grow a new trunk. Trunk gets too old, they grow a new trunk. So trunk if, gets more in it, they grow a new trunk. Right, but if they're can if the girdle remains. Um, and blocks even the new suckers coming up, yeah, that's a problem. But taking the girdle out, usually you just get a new shrub. Okay, is now a good time to cut and divide grasses? Yes, as oh, long yeah. as as long as you can do without them in the winter. A lot of people just enjoy their grasses so much in the winter that they do all that in the spring so that they don't lose the winter interest. But it's a great time yeah. to divide any of the plants. And, and do it like Janet said, take a piece of pie out of it. Don't try to dig all the way around at first. Take a piece of pie and work your way around it. I think yeah. you'll have a lot more success, and especially and if it's fun. more big man miss campus yeah i have i have cried i have just sat down and cried tears of anger and frustration at big <laughs> clumps of siberian iris of hosta of grasses that i just couldn't handle um and handle them by They're just dividing too big in, in place well unless anybody else wants to chime in that looks like all our questions that's great. Those of you who are subscribers, we'll see you on Saturday. We're talking Saturday about um, the usual plants unusually used. used. Uh, those of you who are here just for today, we're glad that you were here and uh, watch our, our uh, emails for when we do the next one of these that we can invite everyone. To. And we will let everybody know when this recording will be up on YouTube. Yes, you'll get a message. And you are, of course, welcome to become a subscriber. Um, every Saturday we get together yep. uh, and we have enjoyed it mightily, even even without COVID, we would have enjoyed it. Yes. Enjoyed this. 
Thank you for yes. being here. Have a great time planting this week. Margaret, thank you so much for being here and helping us out yeah. with this. And uh, we'll see you next time too. And all of you take care.